welcome to a new science content. In this video, we're going to look at a recent study on why dinosaurs got so big, but let's take a look at general information about dinosaurs. Dinosaurs are one of the oldest sources of information about world history and life. Dinosaurs ruled the world for 230 million years, which is an incredible figure, but these creatures disappeared 66 million years ago. One of the best known theories about the extinction of dinosaurs is the Alvarez hypothesis. Named after the father-son duo Lewis and Walter Alvarez, in 1980, these two scientists proposed the idea that 66 million years ago, a mountain-sized meteorite slammed into Earth, filling the atmosphere with gas, dust, and debris, which drastically changed the climate. Its key evidence is a strangely high amount of metal iridium in the layer known as Cretaceous Paleogene or KPG, in the geological boundary region that seems to cover any known rock layer containing dinosaur fossils. Iridium is relatively rare in Earth's crust, but more so in stony meteorites, which led the Alvarezes to conclude that the mass extinction was caused by an extraterrestrial object. The theory became even stronger when scientists were able to attribute the extinction event to a massive impact crater stretching along the coast of Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula. The nearly 93-mile-wide Chicxulub crater appears to be the right size and age to explain the Dino demise. In 2016, scientists dug a rock core in the underwater part of Chicxulub, excavating a sample that extends deep into the seafloor. This rare lookout inside the crater showed that the impact was powerful enough to send deadly amounts of evaporated rock and gas into the atmosphere, and the effects would last for years. And in 2019, Paleontologists excavating in North Dakota found a treasure trove of fossils extremely close to the KPG boundary, essentially capturing the remnants of an entire ecosystem that existed shortly before the mass extinction. Significantly, the fossil-bearing strata contain numerous tiny pieces of glass called tectites, which are likely molten rock droplets that solidified in the atmosphere and were then initiated by the impact that rained down on Earth. This is Theory 1. Herbivores starved and died, probably because the creatures in the Americas were burned in the rains of fire, and the others were destroyed by the sunless plants. It is said that when the herbivores die, the carnivores starve to death. This great extinction, which probably destroyed three-quarters of the world, was completed in 100 years. One of the things I wondered about in the extinction of the dinosaurs was, why didn't the birds go extinct? Studies have shown that the ancestors of today's birds were birds that walked and lived in burrows during the meteor impact. The second theory is volcanism. Other scientists argue that the evidence for a major meteor impact is scant and the more likely culprit may be Earth itself. Ancient lava flows, known in India as the Deccan Traps, also seem to pair nicely with the end of the Cretaceous, with massive lava floods that spread 60 to 65 million years ago. Today, the resulting igneous rock covers an area of about 200,000 square miles in places more than 6 feet thick. Such a massive eruption event would suffocate the sky with carbon dioxide and other gases that would significantly alter Earth's climate. Proponents of this theory point to many clues that suggest volcanism is more favorable. First, some studies show that Earth's temperature was changing even before the proposed impact event. Other research has found evidence for mass extinctions much earlier than 66 million years ago, with some signs, particularly that dinosaurs were already in a slow decline in the late Cretaceous. Moreover, volcanic activity is frequent on this planet and is a plausible culprit for other ancient extinctions, whereas giant meteor strikes are much rarer. Supporters say this all makes sense if the root cause of worldwide KPG extinctions is ongoing volcanic eruption. In two theories this way, by the way, these two may even have happened at the same time. This debate could drag on for years as scientists find new clues and develop new techniques for understanding the past. But whether space invaders or lava piles are the culprits, it's clear that scientists studying the last gasps of dinosaurs are revealing vital lessons about the effects of dramatic climate change on Earth's inhabitants. Now let's get back to our main topic. Why are dinosaurs so big? Titanosaurs like Puertosaurus, Patagotin, and Argentinosaurus were the tallest and heaviest, much longer than a blue whale and perhaps as much as 10 or more elephants. Another example, Patagotin, was about 37.5 meters long and weighed an estimated 57 tons. Can you imagine a 37-meter animal? Various theories have been proposed to explain what made dinosaurs grow to such large sizes, from low gravity to higher oxygen levels in the atmosphere. Most of these have been debunked. For example, for Earth's gravity to decrease significantly, the planet would have to suddenly become much smaller. Instead, Earth grew rapidly in its early history, long before life evolved. 
and has remained fairly constant in size ever since. Likewise, oxygen levels in the Mesozoic era were not much different from what they are today. So this cannot explain the enormous nature of some dinosaurs. Scientists now think that the reason dinosaurs were able to reach such large sizes was due to a number of features. So let's take a look at the theories that explain why dinosaurs got so big. Theory 1 had plenty of food. Dinosaurs lived in the Triassic, Jurassic, and Cretaceous periods. During those times, the climate was much warmer and CO2 levels were four times higher than today. This produced abundant plant life, and herbivorous dinosaurs may have evolved large bodies, in part because there was enough food to support them. Theory 2 had bird-like breathing. The lighter bones of dinosaurs were associated with bird-like respiratory systems. The lighter bones of sauropods and their pods contained air sacs that worked with their lungs to make their breathing very efficient, while humans and other mammals only received oxygen when they breathed. The combination of air sacs and lungs meant that dinosaurs were supplied with oxygen even as they exhaled. It's the same efficient respiratory system that allows geese to fly over the Himalayan mountains in Asia, where oxygen levels are low. Without this ability to constantly take in oxygen, sauropods would not have grown this large or had such long necks. Theory 3, they could use their energy efficiently. It wasn't just the sauropods breathing that was productive, so was their metabolism, how food is converted into energy and ultimately waste. Although sauropods grew very quickly when young, as they got older their metabolism slowed down and became more efficient, so they needed less food than mammals for their size. Sauropods, and especially titanosaurs, had very large stomachs. It took longer for the food to pass through, giving the dinosaurs more time to digest the food and expel the nutrients. They were able to eat plants that other animals might struggle to digest. They probably ate conifer leaves and twigs, and possibly even cones. These larger dinosaurs also lost less energy as heat because they had less surface area than their body volume. Theory 4. They grew up to gain an advantage over each other. Being big had many benefits. The gigantic size of titanosaurs and other large sauropods helped protect them from predators. They can also eat food that other animals cannot reach. In times of famine or drought, they can survive for a while thanks to the oil and water they store in their bodies. These dinosaurs were also well suited to travel long distances, helping them find new sources of food, water, and mates. Also, being big was an advantage over hunters, but hunters grew as well. Theory 5, they have long necks. Gathering enough food using the least effort possible was something these giants were good at. Sauropods had very long necks, which allowed them to stand still and yawn high, low and wide for the best plants around. One reason elephants can get so big is because their trunks likewise allow them to forage for food without much movement. Their extremely long necks also meant that sauropods could pluck leaves from the tops of tall trees out of reach of many other animals, as modern-day giraffes do. Sauropods long necks were also useful for other reasons, which will come to later. One of the reasons sauropods could have such long necks was because they had relatively small heads. This was possible because they had fewer teeth. They swallowed without chewing. Theory 6, they had wide hips. Additionally, titanosaurs had wider hips than previous sauropods, making them even more stable. It also made more room for their large stomachs. A bigger belly meant they got more energy and nutrients from the plants they ate. Important things when you need to power such a big body. Theory 7, they had unique hands and feet. Sauropods had other features that made them more stable and able to bear heavy weight. Their wrists and ankles were less mobile, which made them stronger. Their hands and feet were also large and padded like elephants, which helped them spread their weight. Theory 8. The advantage of being upright. All dinosaurs had an upright, column-like stance. This can support a large body better than the spreading stance of other reptiles such as lizards and crocodiles. It also allowed the dinosaurs to use less energy to move. All dinosaurs shared this body shape advantage. But while two legs are fine for running, and therefore all predatory dinosaurs are bipedal, four legs can support a much larger body. This is why the largest bipedal dinosaurs such as Spinosaurus, Tyrannosaurus and Giganotosaurus weighed only 7 tons. This is still huge, but the largest sauropods were about 8 to 10 times heavy. They walked on all fours. Theory 9. Bony head ornaments lead to greater size. North Carolina State University paleontologist Terry Gates realized that all dinosaurs with bone ornaments on their heads were gigantic dinosaurs, and he set about developing a theory about the relationship between them. Of the 111 their pod skulls he and his research team examined, 20 of the 22 largest predatory dinosaurs had bony head ornaments from mounds and horns to crests, and only one of the dinosaurs under 80 pounds had such an ornament. Those with these characteristics developed faster, 20 times faster than those without. The larger size helped it survive and hunt, sure, but the ornamentation may have also helped make it impressive for potential mates. Thus, size and skull features were transferred faster than their shortcomings. 
Theory 10. Thanks to their air sacs, dinosaurs gained superiority over other creatures and their diversity increased. This theory is actually the main topic of this video. Researchers at Campinas State University in Brazil's Sao Paulo State believe they finally have the answer. In a new study, they explain that the air sac structures in the ancient dinosaur macroclone it acquire key to understanding the evolution of dinosaurs, which continues to captivate our imagination. Macroclum Itaque, which roamed southern Brazil about 225 million years ago, is the oldest dinosaur ever studied with air sac structures. These bone cavities, also found in modern birds, played a vital role in the dinosaur's ability to retain more oxygen, regulate body temperature, and survive the harsh conditions of their time. It is these adaptations that have allowed some dinosaurs, such as the mighty Tyrannosaurus rex and Brachiosaurus, to evolve into gigantic creatures. The air sacs reduce the density of the bones, allowing them to be taller than 30 meters, says Tito Orleano, lead author of the study, in a media release. This dinosaur walked the Earth during the Triassic and paved the way for the extraordinary diversity we saw during the Jurassic and Cretaceous period. The presence of air sacs gave dinosaurs an evolutionary advantage over other groups and allowed them to diversify rapidly, explains Riccardi Branco, uncovering the role of air sacs in dinosaur evolution. This study provides invaluable insights into the extraordinary world of these prehistoric creatures. The discovery of M. Itaquai's unique anatomical features revolutionizes our understanding of dinosaur evolution, paving the way for more exciting explanations for their ancient existence. We have come to the end of the video. Don't forget to subscribe and like for science and technology content. Thanks for watching. Peace.